Hey everyone, it's Miss Karen. It is time for a little nap time story. This is called uh, Sweet Dreams for Sally, A Tale from the Care Bears uh, by Amelia Hubert. So, Sweet Dreams for Sally. Sally lay in her bed and looked at the dark sky. Sally didn't like it. And the dark curtains said, whisper, whisper. And the dark window shade said, rattle, rattle, rattle. In the dark, the clock said, tick, tock, tick, tock. Sally wondered if something was in her room making these sounds. She started to get a little bit scared. I'm a Big girl now, Sally said to herself. I will not call my parents. I know there's nothing to be frightened of. I will shut my eyes, count to ten, and go to sleep. Sally shut her eyes and counted to ten. But it was not easy to sleep. She twisted and turned all night long. Sally did not have a good night's sleep. The next morning, Sally felt grouchy when she got up. She was still tired, and she felt not like going to school. In the kitchen, Sally did not say thank you when her mother gave her some orange juice. Well, said her father, did you wake up on the wrong side of the bed this morning? I hardly slept at all last night, so I don't feel like I woke up at all, said Sally in a cranky voice. That's too bad, said her father. I hope you sleep better tonight. That day in school, Sally was so sleepy that she got five wrong on her spelling test. She dropped the turtle food all over the floor. And because she was feeling grumpy, she had a fight with her best friend, Amy. Sally, you are such a grouch today, Amy said. I don't think I want to play with you after school. Sally walked home by herself. She still felt tired, and now she felt sad and lonely too. When she reached a corner near her house, she heard a gruff voice say, Hey there, Sally. I wish you were in a better mood. You're feeling so grouchy that you're making my tummy rumble. What? said Sally. She tried to find where the voice was coming from. She looked all around and saw no one. Then she looked up. And there, in the branches of a big oak tree, was a little blue bear with a frown on his face and a rain cloud on his tummy. My goodness, said Sally, who are you and how did you know my name? <coughs> my name is Grumpy Bear and I know your name because I know the names of almost everyone who is feeling grumpy. I came to see you because you seem to have a bad case of grouchitis. I can tell you because I'm making my tummy rumble. Listen. With that, Grumpy Bear floated down from the tree and pointed to the little blue crowd, cloud on his stomach. Sally put her ear to his tummy, and sure enough, there was a noise coming out of the cloud. It sounded like distant thunder. Now, when my stomach starts rumbling, someone really needs to help get rid of the grouchies. Why don't you tell me what the problem is? Sally told Grumpy Bear how she had started to be afraid of the dark and how she felt grumpy all day because she had gotten almost no sleep the night before. Oh, 
Grumpy Bear said, I'm afraid that same thing will happen tonight. What if I can't get to sleep again? Grumpy Bear gave her a very ungrumpy smile. Don't worry about a thing, Sally. I have a friend who lives in the same place that I do, the land of Carolot, and I'll bet he can help you with your problem. Really? asked Sally. Really, said Grumpy Bear. Now, he said, you just go home and be on the lookout for Bedtime Bear when you go to sleep tonight. Then Grumpy Bill Bear sailed up into the branches of the tree and was gone. Sally felt better after talking to Grumpy Bear. She wondered if Bedtime Bear would really help her. That night, Sally's mother finished reading her a bedtime story. Then her mother switched off the light. She said, Sweet dreams! and left. Sally was alone. She lay in the bed and looked at the dark. What was the white shape in the corner? Was that bedtime bear? Sally flipped on her light and called for her father and asked, Can I have a drink of water? Of course you can, answered Sally's father, but then you'll have to go to sleep. After Sally's father brought her the water, he said, Sweet dreams, and switched off the light. Sally flipped on the light again, called for her mother, and asked, Can I have a good night kiss? Sally's mother smiled. Of course you can. She kissed Sally, then she said, Sweet dreams, and switched off the light. Sally had been given everything that she needed, a bedtime story, a drink of water, and a good night kiss. But all that was not enough. It was dark, and Sally didn't like it. The dark wasn't cozy. It wasn't friendly. In the dark, Sally's pretty lamp didn't look so pretty. In the dark, Sally's wonderful doll didn't look so wonderful. Where was that bedtime bear? Sally was starting to feel scared again. All of a sudden, something landed on her bed. Sally sat up, and there at the end of the bed was a bear with a moon on his tummy. Are you the bedtime bear? Sally asked. The bear winked and said, You bet your buttons I am. Grumpy Bear sent me. Do you really live in a place called Carolot? Right you are. At least that's where I live during the day. But just remember that when the moon comes peeking into your window at night, I'm usually around somewhere making sure that someone gets a good night's sleep. Now, I know that you are starting to feel afraid of the dark, but I think I can help you, if that's all right with you. I'd love it, said Sally. Well, first of all, I want to show you that there is nothing to be afraid of. See, your lamp and your doll are just like they always were. It was only your eyes that were playing tricks on you. Oh, now I see, said Sally. And, all right then, lie down, close those pretty little eyes, and I'll get to work. Sally turned her cheek into the pillow, scrunched her knees up to her chest, and Bedtime Bear sang her a lullaby. While he sang, Bedtime Bear was busy working. He stopped the window shade from making sharp, rattly sounds. He stopped the curtains from making soft, whispery sounds. He stopped the clock from making loud ticking sounds, and Sally fell asleep. The next day, Sally felt good. At breakfast, she smiled at her father. In school, she spelled every word correctly, 
and she and Amy made up and were friends again. That night, when it was time for bed, Sally hopped right under the covers. She told her father that she did not need a drink of water. She told her mother that she did not need a bedtime story. Just give me a good night kiss and switch off the light, she said. Sally was hoping that she would see Bedtime Bear again. Sweet dreams, said Sally's father. Sweet dreams, said Sally's mother. Then they both left the room. While she waited for Bedtime Bear, Sally looked around the room. Tonight her pretty lamp looked as pretty as it always did. Tonight her wonderful doll looked as wonderful as it always did. Sally knew that she wasn't afraid of the dark anymore. Sally started to get sleepy. <sighs> she tried to keep awake for bedtime there. <sighs> but her eyes gently closed. Later that night, Sally opened her eyes. She was dreaming. There, standing on a beautiful cloud, each holding a twinkling star, were Grumpy and Bedtime Bear. They looked down at her. Sally smiled sleepily. Tuck me in, tuck me in tight, she murmured. As she got comfortable, Sally closed her eyes and dreamed a special dream about the land of Carolot. That must be the land of Carolot. The end.